this nation remains fully committed to America's space program. We are going forward with our shuttle flights. We are going forward to build our space station. And we are going forward with research on a new Orient Express that could, by the end of the next decade, take off from Dulles Airport, accelerate up to 25 times the speed of sound, attaining low Earth orbit, or flying to Tokyo within two hours. The year is 2000, and you are a passenger on board the NASP. Here's what might happen on a typical flight. Imagine taking off from an airport runway, flying at three to five times the speed of sound, at altitudes of 20 miles or even higher. A few short hours after departure, you come to a stop halfway around the world. Or maybe you took off from a runway and flew directly into orbit to work in space, and then you return, landing on a conventional airport runway. The National Aerospace Plane will try to make both scenarios a reality. Although the United States program to develop NASP is a major program, there are many other countries that are involved in the race to develop a national aerospace plane. Japan has a major effort that's underway. The Soviet unions have a lot of capability in this area. And there are at least four countries in Europe that are actively pursuing the development of hypersonic and aerospace planes. We need to keep moving on this program if we're to maintain the leadership in aerospace vehicles. NASA and the Department of Defense have done research on hypersonic technology for many years. The NASP technology demonstrator will be a highly advanced X-plane, a new member of the elite special research aircraft that includes the X-1, which in 1947 was the first aircraft to break the speed of sound and fly supersonic. In the early 1960s, the X-15 became one of the first manned hypersonic aircraft and reached speeds of Mach 7, or about 4,500 miles per hour. The National Aerospace Plane is a technology demonstration and development program. It started about three years ago, and in two years, we'll make a decision to fly what we call an experimental vehicle, which will be termed the X-30. It brings together over 5,000 people across the United States, working in over 40 states. It combines government laboratories and industrial and academic research organizations to produce a vehicle like this. One of the key technological developments of the X-30, or NASP, are in the propulsion area. An air-breathing, hydrogen-fueled, supersonic combustion ramjet engine, or scramjet engine, is now being developed for speeds from about Mach 7 to Mach 25. The engine uses the velocity of the vehicle to compress air as it is rammed into the intake. This compressed air is then mixed with gaseous hydrogen at this stage to generate high thrust. A development on which we will focus is materials. Here to speak on that is Matt Mellis. With the advent of the, the aerospace plane, uh, there's become a need for a lot of new material development. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, we need new materials, all right? And uh, these new materials will most probably be composite materials, but instead of using a, a, a metal matrix-based composite, we'll be using, um, or a epoxy-based, we'll be using a metal matrix-based composite, all right? Metal matrix being uh, copper, for instance. One of the big problems NASA is facing with the advent of the National Aerospace Plane deals with not only finding the right materials to use, but in cooling them as well. We have to figure out some way of making a, a very strong material that's going to survive in a high temperature environment. And what we're going to have to do is actively cool uh, this material. All right, by putting some kind of a uh, cryogenic fluid behind it, gaseous hydrogen or liquid hydrogen, which is very cold uh, and acts as a good uh, heat transfer medium to take heat away from the leaning edge. So on, on one side of the, uh, of the material, on the inside of the wing, for instance, there'll be a lot of coolant rushing through to cool the inside down. And on the outside, you'll have a very hot surface. And that is why we need the high heat conductivity. For instance, you look at fighter jets that travel uh, Mach 1 or Mach 2, or even the Concorde, which goes up to Mach 2. Uh, you see that their wings are very narrow at the leading edges. Okay, And there's a problem with that, because the smaller the leading edge gets, the, the more difficult 
uh, it is to cool. And the hotter it gets because it's such a small, it's just such a small point lying out there in the free stream that uh, it gets it gets very warm very quickly. Uh, obviously, um, if you have a, an airplane that can take off from a runway and go to orbit with a, um, some people in it and go to the space station, for instance, or something like that. Uh, Obviously, it would it would be capable of, of shuttle type operations. Um, as far as payload goes, I think moving big things like space station components, or say for instance they want to go to Mars, uh, and they have to get some big boosters up there or something like that, I don't see the National Aerospace plane taking that kind of payload up there. A group of engineering students at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg have spent the better part of this year building a half-scale mock-up of the aerospace plane. NASA provided funding, and faculty advisors like Walt O'Brien were there to help. But it was the students who had to come up with the plan for their 75-foot mock-up and manage every aspect of its production. Sophisticated computer software was used in designing the plane. A number of factors had to be considered. The mock-up was slated to appear outdoors in at least two major summer air shows, so it had to be transportable, durable, and weatherproof. This is no parade float. <laughs> this is a large, uh, complex undertaking with uh, a lot of, of serious engineering in it. We have a real design challenge with a schedule, with a need for hardware at a certain time. So the educational experience it, it is, is just, um, just super. Several private companies provided materials for the mock-up, which gradually took shape this spring at the university's airport. Many weekends and nights were spent in the hangar. After the aluminum structure was assembled and fitted with sections of polystyrene foam, a weatherproof finish and final paint were applied. The completed 9,000-pound mock-up was rolled out for the first time in a special ceremony on graduation day. For the students whose achievements were recognized, the event marked a significant milestone in a project started five months earlier. After its graduation debut, the mock-up was trucked to Roanoke. Awaiting at the city's airport was a C-5 aircraft, the plane which would carry the mock-up to its final destination, France and the Paris Air Show. Once set up at this international event, the mock-up finally got to serve its intended purpose communicating to the world more effectively than ever what the United States has in mind when it talks about an aerospace plane. It is scheduled to do the same at other air shows, including Dayton, Ohio's this summer. Advanced computer technology and mathematical models are used to design a vehicle capable of speeds up to 17,500 miles per hour. Speeds so fast, they can't be duplicated in wind tunnels and other experimental facilities. Computers have to be used to simulate the shock waves and air flows the X-30 will encounter. Materials for the plane's skin must withstand searing temperatures for extended periods of time. Composites such as carbon-carbon, ceramics, and alloys of titanium and aluminum are being tested. X-30, also known as the National Aerospace Plane, may one day take off from the runway on this California desert lake bed. This research vehicle will be a true air-to-space machine, taking off like an air-breathing aircraft and accelerating to 17,500 miles per hour into low Earth orbit. The next step is an experimental aerospace plane that can travel 25 times the speed of sound.
about 30 times faster than a jet airliner. The ultimate goal? To demonstrate the technologies which will allow efficient, flexible access to space. Vehicles incorporating X-30 technology may someday deliver satellites into orbit and visit space station freedom. Drawing on the nation's most sophisticated research efforts, the National Aerospace Plane will help maintain world leadership for the United States in aeronautics and space technology. Meeting this challenge can help today's most ambitious space plans become tomorrow's reality. For now, the X-30, as it's also called, is flown only with simulators. Although the plane does not yet exist, it sponsors NASA and the Department of Defense, along with a team of five major aerospace companies are working together to make it a reality in the next decade. NASA and the Department of Defense are co-sponsoring a unique cooperative effort among aerospace companies to design and develop the airframe materials and systems for the National Aerospace Plane scheduled to begin flights in the late 1990s. The Aerospace Plane follows in the footsteps of a distinguished series of experimental aircraft that overcame many obstacles. Beginning with the Bell X-1, Chuck Yeager's historic flight broke the sound barrier. In the 60s, the X-15 flew at seven times the speed of sound. More recently, the X-29, with its sophisticated forward-swept wing design, proved advanced materials and computer-aided controls yield unmatched maneuverability. The promise of low-cost access to space has also encouraged the Europeans and Japanese to begin working on their own versions of the space plane. Computer models are being used to simulate the shock waves and heat the X-30 will encounter as it roars through Earth's atmosphere nearly 30 times faster than a jet airliner. To help ensure that this high-tech concept becomes a reality, a group of about 50 engineering students, faculty members, and technicians at Mississippi State University set out to build a one-third scale mock-up of the aerospace plane. The goal was to create something that would help communicate what the X-30 is all about. A model folks could see and touch at air shows and museums around the country. It had to be rugged enough to withstand the rigors of both the road and mother nature. This wasn't a problem for the project team. They built it just like an actual flying prototype. Professor of Aerospace Engineering, Masood Reshrohani. It is quite realistic. We did not make any shortcuts, or we did not uh, take into consideration that this thing is not going to fly, so we don't have to make this part strong or that part strong. We did not think that way at all. Building it like a real plane gave aerospace engineering students who worked on the mock-up an opportunity to apply what they'd learned in four years of classwork and get a better idea of what to expect once they graduated. One of the keys to designing and building the model in just one semester was the use of a robotic router to cut molds for key components, an approach that spurred real interest in the aerospace industry. Professor Kenneth Hall we actually have people waiting in line now that they see our construction techniques to apply these techniques to their aircraft prototype development. At a ceremony in the school hangar with some 500 supporters on hand, the 50-foot, 5,000-pound mock-up was presented to the public for the first time. Congratulations accepted. It was time to ready the model for the road. Its wings were stowed and landing gear removed. Once loaded onto a large flatbed truck, the two and a half ton mock-up was bound for its first air show. Beginning a journey, 
that will help usher in a new era of space travel. Able to fly from airport runways directly into Earth orbit and withstand temperatures up to 5,000 degrees, the National Aerospace Plane represents the future in aeronautics and space technology. Unlike a previous design resembling a Concorde, the new X-30's wide fuselage provides much of the plane's lift and reduces wingspan requirements. A wide nose directs airflow into the plane's air-breathing ramjet and scramjet engines. Dual vertical tails have been added for greater stability at all speeds. It will harness a set of ramjets, scramjets, and finally rocket propulsion flying directly into orbit. While the interest in creating such a technology is very high, it presents unique and even daunting challenges. No existing plane or wind tunnel can duplicate the 17,500 miles per hour the X-30 will attain. Materials for the plane must meet rival needs of strength, lightness, and ability to withstand searing temperatures at re-entry. We're starting the, uh, the descent now from 10,000 feet. And the little airplane symbol that you see right at the intersection of those two black runways is actually the flight path market. We can maneuver back and forth and line ourselves up for landing. It's an unpowered flight. There's no thrust at all from the engines. We'll go ahead and put the landing gear down. And we're coming through 600 feet. You can see the, the end of the runway coming up there. Coming through 100 feet, 40 feet, 20 feet, and touchdown. 